Bodie. Yes, sir. You're here. I am here. Uh, well, thanks for being on This Week in Startups. Thanks for uh, agreeing to talk about your startup company. Um, uh, can we hear him okay? The fidelity is good coming from the speakerphone? Can yeah, it? We're good. we're good. Okay, awesome. And the audience can hear him. Uh, Bodhi, you emailed me this week. Uh, you're a firefighter, uh, which is awesome. My brother's a firefighter in New York. Where are you a firefighter? Uh, I'm a firefighter in Arizona in a town uh, that borders Phoenix. Are you a volunteer firefighter, or is this your full-time gig? No, it's my full-time gig. So you're a paid firefighter, um, which is awesome as a job. Uh, I mean, except for the part about running into the burning buildings. That's uh, the best part. Yeah, that is, you know, you sound like my brother. Every time I talk to my brother, he's like, yeah, we had this great one, and I went in through the window, and I'm just like, okay. Um, but you get to work like two days a week, right, because you do 24-hour shifts or 18-hour shifts? Yeah, it works out to like nine or ten days a month. Right, which means you have the other 20 days a month to hang out with your family, I hope, uh, and uh, actually work and do a second gig, which a lot of firefighters do. Tell me about your idea. All right. I'm gonna, if it's okay, I'm not going to go into too many specifics because we're right. really in early alpha. But okay. basically what we're trying to do is uh, like social networking light and kind of make it fun all at the same time. Just take the what we feel are the best part of social networking sites like Dig and Twitter and things like that right. and make it easy for people um, – in this case, we're doing like a, an iPhone app. So we're going to take all those things that we think are the best features and we're going to package those into an easy-to-use iPhone app. Right. Um, so social networking for the iPhone, um, this is a good idea, right? You're taking two trends, um, which are very powerful. The iPhone is a huge trend, and so is the um, uh, social networking thing. And in Japan, as a matter of fact, most people do their social networking on their phones. Um, so how is this different than me just using the MySpace application or the Facebook application? What's the uh, or the Dig application? All these guys have iPhone apps and/or iPhone enabled websites. What's going to be different here? Is this for sharing links? Is it for doing email? Is it for instant messaging? What is a social activity? Well, what we're really trying to promote uh, above anything uh, is uh, citizen journalism. Ah. So if you're sitting at a bar in L.A. and you see Britney Spears changing her kid's uh, diaper, which is probably maybe too old for that now, but on the table you can type that into the uh, application we have. You can tag it under right. a different category, and then uh, it goes out. And people who are looking uh, for items under that category, they'll see it. But here's the thing, is if you write something totally stupid, it's totally user-based. It will die. It won't right. go to more than 10 iPhones. Right. If it's awesome, it through voting, people are going to vote for it, and it'll um, move to more and more and more iPhones. Right. So the good stuff gets surfaced, and the bad stuff by voting, I guess, goes down. Um, and you want to do right. this for local news. Uh, so now you've added another sort of theme to this, which is local news, which is, by the way, the local business, most difficult business, uh, one of the most business difficult businesses online from a revenue perspective, and we haven't gotten to that part. So what exactly uh, is your question about this? Because there, there is something here. You're, you're, you've, you've hit some good themes. What's the question? Okay, the, so the first question is, it's just it's myself and a buddy of mine who works for a company, and I can't right. mention his name, but uh, uh, every time I mention a new feature to him, right. even if it's on the phone, I can, I can hear his eyes rolling in his head and his stomach just growling because uh, it takes about three weeks for every new feature I ask him to, to put in there. Right. So... In order to save this guy, because um, I don't do any programming, what are the what are the must-have um, social networking features that should be in a social networking app at launch to keep people from coming to people not from coming back to coming back to the application? Yeah. So one of the things that so that you have the typical dynamic between a startup sort of founder and their technology partner, which is. You want to do every feature. Your, your partner can't do every feature. And, and there's got to be some balance of prioritization, et cetera. Um, and so what, what I think you have to do is look at how many resources you have. You're funding this yourself, obviously. Um, right. And you want to get to a launch. You, you need to take the big vision and figure out how to get to the big vision. Uh, and uh, I'm assuming that you're not independently wealthy and can burn through millions of dollars a year and you don't have $10 million in venture capital sitting in a bank account. Oh, man, yeah. That's, right, that's so you're going to have to do this happy. like a pure startup. So in that case, uh, what I suggest is trying to maybe take that huge vision you have of like everybody having this application or 10% of users having this application and people are uh, trying to do it in every market, you know, and you've got information from Arizona and New York and L.A., maybe try to bring it down and make 
this citizen journalism site for one local town. And this is something I don't think anybody's ever done. But if there was an iPhone application that was my neighborhood, like here is the iPhone application for Brentwood or Santa Monica or Phoenix, and then a bunch of people sharing notes on the best of what's going on in that town and voting it up and down, that could be compelling. Um, and you can sort of bring it down uh, by location, right? And you could also narrow it down uh, maybe by a demographic, adults, kids, whatever, uh, or even a function. So it's always good when you're trying to build one of these companies, I think, to maybe start smaller. You have the big vision, but start a little smaller. So um, maybe you could do just, I don't know, Phoenix, and maybe just bars in Phoenix, you know? Or just, uh, you know, things that nightlife that's going on there. Find a, a, a data feed of those things and have people vote that up and down. And then add news stories, et cetera. Um, so th that would probably be the best thing. Um, in terms of social networking, obviously you have a whole bunch of features like comments and following people and sharing uh, and voting things up and down. So I think you know what they are. Right. Um, but I think start small and make it work, and then you'll have some credibility, perhaps even a revenue stream or a sponsor, a user base, and then you can go bigger. Um, any other questions about the, the project? Really, I'm, I kind of have one general question that yeah. doesn't necessarily have to do with this project, but I think it's a good question for most people watching the show. Is yeah. At what stage in, uh, of development is a, is, what stage of a project is it the best time to uh, approach like a venture capital firm? And then once you do, what are they looking from you? Uh, that is a great question. Um, when to approach a VC firm? This depends on uh, your track record. You've never raised venture capital, right? No. Okay, so that means you're in the bucket of people that they're going to look at and say, these are people who've never had a successful exit or raised venture capital, which means they're going to look at you sort of at the bottom of their list. So then how do you build credibility with them? You know, if you've done two or three companies, when I was on my third company, it was very easy to raise venture capital. When I was on my second company, I could get the meetings, but it wasn't easy on the first company. It was sort of out of the question. Um, you can, when you're starting off, if you have performance, if you have 10,000 people using it, 50,000 people using it, if you have some potential and they can see that and you've built it, they're going to respect it. You walking in with just a business plan, they're, they're just not going to do it, period. Uh, so I wouldn't even waste your time. You've got to build something and come to them with some performance. Um, once they see the performance, then they're going to look at, do you have domain expertise in this? Um, and how big is the market? So uh, they tend to make their decisions, VCs, based on the market and they make their decisions based on the, the management team. Here, they don't have a lot to go on on the management team because you haven't done something. Therefore, they're going to look at the market and the performance. So you have one lever to work, and that's your performance, what you've actually done. You've got to work that hard. You've got to come to them with a lot of success. Um, and the other option is you could find somebody who's raised venture capital and had a big exit. So there's a lot of entrepreneurs in Arizona. Find one of them and bring them on the team. So then when you go to them, they say, oh, yeah, and here's this guy who worked for Google or worked at Yahoo or worked at Mebo or worked at Dig. So now you've built a little credibility with them. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So um, good luck with the application. Um, have fun with it. It's not, don't spend too much money, right? Control costs. And uh, release it. That's the most important thing. Get it in the hands of users because that's when you're going to start learning, right? Uh, yes. You, you learned a lot in the academy, I take it? Oh, yeah, tons. And how much did you learn on your first fire? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a night and day. Uh, exactly. So you got to, you know, the, the equivalent here is, you know, after you're, you learn more in your first fire than you probably do in the academy, I think, because um, then it's real. I know when I worked on an ambulance, like, the first call was a guy who got stabbed in the chest. The, I learned a lot more on that first call than I did <laughs> in, in, you know, the, the classes to become an EMT. So uh, Absolutely. And it's super cool. You know, I think it's great for you to be doing the fireman thing and then using that, you know, stability to then build a company on. I always did that because I was broke. I used to fix laser printers and then build my startups at night. So awesome questions and good luck with it and keep us in the loop on how you do, okay? Thanks, buddy. Take care, buddy. You've been watching This Week in Startups. To watch the full episode, click here. To check out some other shows from This Week in, click here.